This is Tom Does Tech. I'm Tom, and welcome to the third and final video in the Full Stack URL Shortener series. In this video, we're going to deploy our application. So we're going to deploy the application onto a DigitalOcean droplet. We're going to use Caddy as the web server. Caddy is an alternative to Nginx or Apache, and Caddy is going to handle the HTTPS or TLS for us. So we're going to start off by installing .env. We're going to add a custom environment variables file. And then we're going to update Docker Compose to use the .env file. We're going to create a caddy file. And then we're going to create a build script. We're going to deploy the application onto a DigitalOcean droplet. And we're going to deploy the UI onto Vercel. So let's start off by installing .env. So let's start off by installing .env. So let's start off by installing .env. While .env is installing, we can create this custom environment variables.ts in config. And this is going to allow us to use environment variables from our .env file. So this will be the string that matches the default config, and then this will be the string that is in the environment variable. So if we look in our .env file, we can set this cause origin by simply saying cause origin equals our user interface URL. In this case, we're just setting it to Google to make sure that it works. Next, we need to make sure that we have this m file set up in Docker Compose that points to the .env in the root directory. Create a caddy file in the server's root directory. And your caddy file should look something like this. So I have my API's endpoint here. In this case, it's short api.snip.io. And it's going to point to our Docker container on port 4000. And on the way down to the client, we're going to add this header. So header down is when you send the response from caddy to the browser. Header up would be when you are sending a response from Caddy to our application. But in this case, we want this header to be visible to the client. Create a deploy script in the application's root directory and call it deploy.sh. So the script is going to use bash. It's going to run git pull. It's going to echo out building server. And then it's going to run our Docker compose file in our server directory, minus D and build flags. And minus D just means it's going to run in detached mode. So your console won't be tied up with the Docker Compose command. It will just run in the background. Make sure we push these changes. Before we deploy our backend, we're going to deploy our front end application. So come over to vercel.com. And if you don't have an account already, you can create one for free. And once you're into your dashboard, click new project. Import the GitHub repository. Select your organization. And then select UI in the application. Continue. We're going to set one environment variable. So if you remember from the last video, we have one environment variable in the UI. And that's React app underscore server endpoint. And this is going to point to wherever you're going to host your API. And then we can click deploy. So once the application has finished deploying, you'll get this congratulations message and you can visit the site. So if you remember from the last video, this is the application that we created. So we can put our URL into the box here, click create, and we can check that it is sending the request to the right URL. And you can see that it's sending it here to HTTPS short api.snip.io slash api slash URL. And that is correct. So now that we've deployed our front-end application, we can begin deploying our back-end application. So I'm deploying this on a DigitalOcean droplet, but you could deploy it any way you like. You could deploy it on an Amazon EC2 instance, or you could even deploy it on a Raspberry Pi if you liked. If you don't have a DigitalOcean account already, you can sign up through my affiliate link and you'll get $100 worth of credit. 
and I'll get $25 worth of credit. So start off by creating a new droplet, go to marketplace, select Docker, and this will create a instance with Docker already installed. Otherwise you'll have to install Docker yourself. Create a regular SSD, $5 a month. Select the region that's closest to you. Make sure you're using SSH keys. They're much easier to manage and more secure. You can rename your droplet. And click create droplet. Once your droplet has finished creating, click copy next to the IP address. Come over to your domain name provider, add an A record. In this case, I'm using a subdomain that's going to be short API. If you want to use your domain's root directory, use this at symbol and point it to the IP address. Now we can log into our server and start deploying the application. So I can use SSH minus I, and this is pointing to my private key. And I'm going to log in as root at the IP address. I'm going to say yes, trust this host. The first thing we need to do is to install git. So we can type apt get update and apt get install git. Once git has been installed, move into slash var and git clone your application from GitHub. CD into the application. We're going to touch we're going to cd into server. And we're going to touch a .m file. And then we're going to nano the .m file. And we can update the contents of this file. So we'll set our cause origin to be our front end applications URL. Make sure you don't have a trailing slash on the end of this URL. We can update our DB URI. I am using a Mongo Cloud Atlas database. But you can use any database provider you like. I do recommend Mongo Cloud Atlas. It's very easy to set up and use, and their free tier is quite generous. User interface domain. So our deployment isn't actually going to work because we haven't added our Caddy configuration to Docker Compose. So we need to add Caddy because that's going to act as the web server. So come into your Docker Compose file and under services where we have our URL shortener server, we're going to add a new service for Caddy. Our Caddy configuration is going to use the Caddy image and we're going to use the Alpine version. It's going to create a container called Caddy service. It's going to restart unless it's stopped explicitly. And it's going to use ports 80 and 443. And it's going to use these volumes. You can see here that we have a Caddy file. So it's going to move the Caddy file from our project directory into this etc Caddy folder. And we need to add some volumes. Now we can push these changes to GitHub and then we can run our deploy script again and it will pull and rebuild the application. So we can run dot slash deploy again and this will pull down our changes and then rebuild the application with Caddy as the web service. So we can see here that both the node application and the caddy service have been deployed. So we can go back to our application and check that it is working correctly. So if we come back to our application and try to create a short URL, hopefully your background has a nice cute dog like this one. We can see that it has created our short URL and we have a successful response here. So that is our short URL backend, frontend, and deployment finished. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe and like the video.